Let's talk today about adding some lighting into your Enscape views of your SketchUp model. And the easiest thing that we've already learned this one is adding just a glowing material to a particular object. Now I'm going to add uh, some glowing material to this hanging light fixture that you see here. The tricky bit with these is you have to sometimes either hide things that are in the way or you have to manipulate your model so that you can see the material. So I'm looking from below. I just need to make sure to slurp up the material. There it is. And you can see it's even called glass. So it has some transparency to it already. Just make sure that it's not painted the default color. That's this one over here. If you see that default color, you know that you're not going to be able to fiddle around with it in Enscape. So you could actually pick any color doesn't really matter as long as it's a glowing material. Anyway, we'll come in here to our Enscape Materials menu and we'll make it a self-illuminated material. And like magic, you can see that it lights up here in the Enscape menu. And you can fiddle around with this to get the brightness that you want. Too much brightness and it gets a little bold, but too little and you don't even notice that it's in there. Sometimes what you'll find though is that it's not quite bright enough when you add in all the other lighting. So we'll see how that works so far. Now that's one light fixture. What can we do about other light fixtures? For example, these table lamps. Wouldn't it be nice if they had a light bulb in them? Well, yes it would. And what you need to do, navigate to where you can find the table lamp and go in there and edit it. And you can see here, there's no light bulb drawn into this thing. It's just some strange base geometry. Well, what we can do, we can actually use one of Enscape's light bulbs. These can be found here under Enscape Objects. I'll just call up that menu. And you can see there's, there's a couple of different kinds of light bulbs. Interesting enough, there's also a sound source and what's called a linked model, which we'll worry about at some other point. Anyway, if I just click Sphere, you can see it even looks suspiciously like a light bulb. And what you'll see is my cursor becomes kind of a yellow blob. And the way Enscape places objects is you click once to kind of define a reference point for the light source. Then you click the second time to actually place it. So I'm going to click on that base the first time. I'm going to tap the up arrow so that the light bulb is actually going up. And then I'm going to make sure that it's kind of in the middle of this lampshade. And then let's zoom in a little bit on these tabletops. You can see my project got bright immediately. And I can just tweak how bright these are. You see, I can get a nice little pool of light there. Again, I don't have a lot of light fixtures in my project. I don't have any except for this. So you'll probably want to come back and adjust it later. But this is a great way to get your project to light up almost instantly. So to place a light into one of these down lights, it's a little more tricky. I'm going to edit this down light. I'll just use my select command and edit it. And I've created several different downlight components. So I have to get in here and edit this guy. If I hide the rest of your model, you'll see I have about six of these guys. And then I have a whole bunch of other ones that are an entirely different component. And that'll allow me to tweak the way the lights work in each one. I'm going to come in here, click on Enscape Objects again. But this time I'm going to try using a spotlight. And what this will allow me to do is I can come in here I can place my light source and you can try to place it up on the underside of the ceiling. Remember, like with the bulb, you'll want to click once to define the kind of reference point. The second time to define the location of the light source. And then you'll want to click again on the ground directly below the fixture. And I'll just click on the ground right here and grab a spot just above it. What you should see in your Enscape window I'll just mosey over here, is that I now have a whole flood of light on the floor. And you can change a number of things, but the cool thing about a spotlight is you can make it wider or narrower. And you see how I have multiple blobs of light on the floor. I can also change the intensity. That's a little too intense for me. But you can see how you're starting to develop a space that has some different kinds of lighting effects.
And I'll just close this and close out of these components. And I can place a very similar kind of cone of light up in these higher down lights here. Again, the trick is aiming the light source so that you get it on the floor right below the fixture. I could also add in a bulb in the middle of this chandelier. This one's a little more tricky because I can't really use a glowing material, although I could try making this material a little glowy and it will hopefully have that effect. There are a few other types of light sources that you can use. They're a little more tricky than the ones we used so far. For example, I could use a rectangular light. Now this one is a little more tricky than the other ones because you, first of all, just like the spotlight, you click on a reference point, then you click on some point near it. I'm going to use my up arrow to force it to go up off the ground so we can see what we're lighting. And then it, it's basically a giant cone or a giant, I don't know, rectangle of light. I'm going to aim it up on the ceiling so we can see the effect. Again, you click once to define a reference point and a second time to define the location of the light. Let's look up on the ceiling and see what we're getting with this. We can change the power of the light source, see how it really fills the ceiling with light. Very soft kind of light. This is great if you just want a little bit of fill light on your ceiling. You can also control how wide the box and the target box are. If you just come in here and I'll zoom in so you can see what's happening. Here's the box of light that it's creating. If I drag these sliders, that box gets a little bigger. Be aware that wherever you put this, so it can have spill light on the back of the chairs and other things. Fortunately, this one I placed it high enough. But just be aware that this is a great way to make fill light in a space, but it can also get you into some trouble. The linear light source and the disk light work in a very similar way. What other fun stuff does Enscape have up its sleeve? Well, there's one other really cool thing that's the asset library. What's nice is you can put people into your projects and they become three-dimensional people and they render pretty nicely. They're absolutely not the full-on photorealistic images that you can get when you use something like Photoshop. But they're really not bad. And other things that are in here that I happen to like that can be a real problem if you use them on their own are things like vegetation. Plants are really tough on SketchUp. If I use a lot of plants in my model, let me just place a plant right here, they really slow down your model. So using Enscape plants is a great way to kind of get that cool effect, but not have to deal with the slowdown in your model. And these models are components. They can be modified in all the usual ways, including moving them, and rotating them. So if you want them to look in different directions, you absolutely can do that. And they tend to look more photorealistic. Obviously, in our case, we use some photorealistic people. If that's the type of aesthetic that you like in your drawings, by all means use that. You could also use plants that are loaded in from the 3D warehouse. Just be aware that you should probably change material name to foliage. That makes it a little sharper in the rendered image. One last thing you can do, if your model is starting to slow down, and this is true when you add things like 150 spoons, each one that are five megabytes in size, those sorts of things will just make your model grind to a halt. Enscape does have another little trick up its sleeve. That is using what are called proxy objects. Now this table it's probably going to be one if I had a lot of these, it could slow my model down. So to replace this annoying high polygon component, I can just right click on it and choose save as external model for Enscape. You'll then want to browse for your project folder on your computer and save that file. It will often give it its own name, it doesn't really matter what the name is, but choose save what you'll see is it disappears from the SketchUp model. You can still select it and copy it just by clicking on the edge of that gray boundary. And you can see here it has absolutely no effect whatsoever on the Enscape view. What it's doing is it's just taking that model 
that highly complex multi-polygon model and kind of removing it from directly in your SketchUp project. So for our work here, you'll want to add in as much lighting as you can think of. If you don't have any lighting in your project, particularly things like down lighting, which we tend to forget, you'll want to just pop that in there and add in some light bulbs inside those down lights. 